Cloud and virality are currently the most valuable currencies on the internet, so it comes to no surprise that these YouTubers would literally sell their souls for clout and do anything it takes to go viral, with one of our first examples being Jack Doherty. At a very young age, Jack Doherty would experience the thrill of going viral consistently, which some people argue is the underlying cause of his downfall. However, as Jack would slowly get more and more attention, becoming one of the fastest growing channels on YouTube, he would begin to up the ante as he began shifting his content to bothering employees. Don't take pictures of me, I'll break your camera. As time would go on, Jack would keep breaking in views, which would give him the incentive to do more and more awful things to stay relevant. While you may be thinking that Jack was already doing some pretty awful stuff, you could argue that his content at the time was extremely toned down considering where he would end up. Because more recently, Jack's content has just morphed into him going around and harassing random people in the hopes of getting a reaction out of them. And as soon as someone stands up for themselves, Jack cowardly hides behind his bodyguards. <laughs> However, even his guards couldn't save him all the time. Regardless of being the most hated person on the platform, Jack has made it his mission to do whatever it takes to stay in the public eye for as long as possible. His collaborations with the Island Boys is a testament to the fact that Jack will by all means necessary do whatever it takes to keep getting views. Most of Jack's streams consisted of him inviting a bunch of streamers over to his house and causing issues between them in order to up his engagement. Bro, why are you being a baby? He's rage quitting. You're not supposed to go. Hey, stop! Yo, what's up? One of the more popular moments that came out of this was his interaction with FoozyTube, who seemingly got so annoyed with Jack that he smacked him and had to be escorted out of the house. We're going back, dog. And now we can't box. There's a whole. Oh, oh, oh. oh. The f I slapped the that dog out of you. Even hurt. I slapped the dog out of you. Other than being insufferable towards other streamers and people he works with, Jack has even taken this persona to public. He'll often just start bothering random people on stream, which many of his viewers would love watching. I didn't say any curse words. What I say? Just watch your language. What I say? You got a stupid shirt on over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your kids can't read though. Your kids can't read. Can I? I'm sure your kids watch. Uh, you get away from you me. start talking to me, buddy. Get away. Uh, 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 you get away from me. Watch your kids. Go walk, walk away. Hey, 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 Jack often pretends to be concerned about how his actions cause harm to people around him, but in reality, he does not care. As long as Jack's content is being talked about and shared across the internet, he doesn't seem to care who he hurts in the process. After starting this stream on Kick, Jack tried to make his content as toxic as possible by going to random parties and starting beef with random people, but avoiding any real confrontation as the security would swoop in to save him. While Jack Doherty doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon, it'll only be a matter of time until someone will actually do something to him. However, if there's an Another streamer who would go even further than Jack for views, it's probably Neon. Neon has carefully crafted his persona of the geek who will say the most disrespectful stuff behind the camera where there is no risk of confrontation. But before we get into that, when you leave your home, some of the items you carry on you might be your phone, keys, and wallet. And that's where today's sponsor, Extra, comes in. Extra offers some of the best quality, sleek, and practical wallets. I've been using their aluminum card holder and parliament wallets, and they've been great carrying around. With just a click of a button, these wallets guide your cards out, making it easy to pick the one you need while saving you time and effort. Extra wallets can easily hold 1 to 12 cards plus cash. They also come with what I love the most, a tracker card. This card helps you locate your wallet on a map if it's ever lost. Plus, you can slip the tracker into other things like bags for extra security. It's a game changer for keeping your essentials organized and secure. Check out all the unique products Extra offers and get up to 25% off using my code PICTURES upon checkout for Extra's anniversary sale by clicking the link in the description. Thanks Extra, now back to the video. This streamer sold his soul to get quick views pretty early on, when he faked his own death to gain sympathy from his online audience, which was an early sign into the mindset of Neon and what he would do to get views. And there's no reason to make a joke out of it. If you guys are making fun of me or laughing and saying it's fake, then you guys are just terrible people. Even though Neon successfully got the sympathy he was looking for, he was later exposed for faking his death as the events of his story didn't match up. Regardless of the hate he got, Neon realized that the easiest way to stay relevant was to keep a target on your head and play the villain, and that's exactly what he did. Often on stream, Neon would say the most vile things to show how much of a tough guy he is, and during these enraged outbursts, Neon would say some of the most out-of-pocket things you aren't likely to hear anywhere. Oh no. Hey, finished! I'm gonna go f this cat! How the f you wake up like that? How do you 
please tell me. Bro, please I'm tell not. Me. Neon's whole gimmick is circled about how to get the most views as possible. And considering the persona he's built, it's no surprise that everyone wants to see him get beat up. Neon almost always takes things too far, which has caused him to get caught up in the wrong crowd. Although, considering that Neon was also exposed for faking his viewer count on Kick, many people believe that nothing he does is ever authentic. So when this clip went viral of him getting jumped by a group of people, after he basically ordered a hit out on himself, many people question whether it was even real. Hey, look whose shoes we got! Got his ass lacking! Come on, bro! Got his ass lacking! Hey, what size y'all want? Look at his shirt! Ripped all type of stuff, boy! You know not to come around here talking like that! Yeah! <laughs> Regardless, it served his purpose of showing up in everyone's Twitter for a few more days. Even though Neon was quick to post a response after the video surfaced, saying he would quit YouTube, he clearly didn't stay true to his word because of the clout the whole ordeal was getting him. With streamers who base their entire brand around getting as much attention as possible, it can be hard to judge whether something is real or being done for clout. And the same can also be said about Neon's relationship with Sam Frank, who is an OnlyFans model and used to be Jack Doherty's ex. It's not hard to imagine why Neon and Sam would be together, considering how both of them benefit from each other. Ever since Neon has started dating Sam, his viewership has increased and the videos he does with her tend to get more views. More recently, Neon posted a video where his security team got jumped in LA, with Sam left pretty distraught after the situation. What the f Close the f door! Close the f door! Close the f door! Lock the f door! Lock the f door! What the f was that? What the f was that, Mikhail? Oh, Mikhail, what the f was that? It's quite telling that Neon's girlfriend seemed genuinely scared for her life, but as the video got close to a million views, Neon would still post it. And because his viewership has been declining, it's actually valid to theorize that he creates fake beef or putting his security team at risk just to keep his viewer count rising. Considering Neon's history of faking pretty serious situations, almost nothing he does can be taken seriously. From the drama he's involved in to his relationship, everything about Neon seems to be fabricated to generate more views. More recently, Sam and Neon got into an altercation with another YouTuber called Vitality. Tally ZD TV. It doesn't matter, you're a grown oh, man doing this. Oh, yeah, Get a grip of your life, you pathetic ass. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Come on. After Sam spat on Vitaly. Damn, you're hurt, you're hurt, bro. You're hurt. Oh. We kiss now. He called the cops afterward to report them, and the video of Sam apologizing to Vitaly went viral. No, no, I'm. I, I need you to say, I'm sorry, King Vitaly. I'm sorry, King Vitaly. I'm so sorry, sir. Because you know what? If I do this again, I will end up in jail. And that's just. That's so unnecessary. However, in classic Neon fashion, the video was posted with a title suggesting that Neon and Sam got arrested, when in reality, they were let go. The video itself has already crossed 100,000 views, which is already more than what Neon averages within his usual uploads. While Neon always tries to one up his videos to get views, Neon's career has undoubtedly been a roller coaster of highs and lows, which wouldn't have happened if it weren't for Aiden Ross. Because after all, Aiden was the person who made Neon's career, but he's also someone included on this list. Aiden Ross started out like any other streamer, with a camera, a mic, and a dream, and after years of streaming consistently, Aiden had finally built an audience by streaming NBA 2K. He got his big break after he started streaming with Bronny Jr., which led him to get a chance to talk to LeBron James on stream. That moment really spiked his viewership, which gave Aiden a taste of what fame is really like. What's good, bro? It's LeBron? It's LeBron. He said, is this LeBron? <laughs> Yo! After that point, Aiden Ross slowly rose to fame as he found the perfect balance on how to play his audience for views. He was incredibly adept in knowing when to play dumb for his viewers. Okay, so the average salary is what, like $100,000? What? When to act sauce. Kai, baby! Oh, he looks so hot! Ooh, that fucking four foot three Ooh, that, ooh, that, ooh! and went to act edgy. But other than Aiden's antics, he also developed friendships with popular rappers like Lil Uzi Vert, Tory Lanez, and Lil TJ. Aiden's gay baiting would become a staple part of his streams. The performance would be great for the views Aiden was getting, as he would keep on leaning into the persona, often doing vile things just to get a reaction out of the people he would have on stream. Damn, Z. You ready to be on our date? Wow. Jesus, he is. Bro, Aiden, what the fuck? Ah! However, everything would change for the worse. After Aiden left Twitch and signed a 10 plus million dollar contract with Kick, a platform which is notorious for allowing basically any kind of content. This is where Aiden Ross really lost all control, and his streams went from inviting rappers over to OnlyFans models and adult film stars. Some of his streams would end up looking like this. 
Alright. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, come on. Alright, I'm, I'm getting, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Even though Aiden was always looking for ways that would increase his viewership, the disturbing thing was the fact that most of Aiden's audience were young teenagers. You see, Aiden loves to play the role of the oblivious guy who doesn't know what he's doing, but that didn't stop him from streaming inappropriate content to his underage audience, even asking them what they would want to see. What do y'all want to watch, bro? I don't support- Like, I don't- I don't support this What do y'all want to watch on here, bro? I don't support this I don't condone it. I don't support it. Well, things had already gone too far, Aiden would somehow find a way to top everything else when he started hosting sadistic torture streams where he would offer money to his viewers in exchange of doing vile things like this on stream. Fuck up, fat ass. It's clear that Aiden doesn't really have any kind of remorse of streaming this kind of content to his audience which mostly consists of children. But unlike Aiden, who sold his soul for views by often heading down degenerate paths, the next YouTuber simply steals content for views. Most YouTubers who climb up the ladder do so by working hard and improving their craft. But that surely can't be said about Sniperwolf, who's been posting a similar brand of reaction videos for the past 5 years. Sniperwolf, also known as Leo, has gained over 30 million subscribers by doing the same content for years, and YouTube's algorithm is promoted her to the point where she is one of the most recognizable creators on the platform, and as a result, she's also earned millions of dollars. But more recently, a prominent YouTuber known as Jax Films was very vocal in his criticism for the content she would make, and so he would make many videos outlining how little value Sniperwolf would add to the content, all while YouTube was promoting Sniperwolf as a keynote speaker at their events. In each of her hundreds and hundreds of videos, she plays other people's TikToks and provides extremely base-level commentary. This dude is running sideways! Jack then started a new channel where he would react to Leah's reaction videos, but even he wouldn't have imagined that his new channel would go on to get over half a million subscribers in just a few months. Leah would however continue to upload these videos and as long as YouTube was behind her, it would have been impossible to stop her. But Leah isn't the kind of person who would just let her reputation be tarnished. Every single video for the past few months has been about me, and it's just like shitting on me. And then his streams. This dude is just like low-key harassing me. Like, should I get a restraining order? With Jack's videos pulling in more views, Leo would slowly experience a decline in her viewership, which she would obviously not take well. In fact, she was so pressed about this that she ended up doxing Jack's films, waiting outside of his house at night just to talk to him, and uploaded a video of Jack's home on her Instagram story for millions of her followers to see. All right, right in front of your house. Come out. Come out and talk to me. He has... The whole situation left Jack traumatized, but Leah would only treat the whole thing as a joke as she posted this story on her Instagram the very next day. After Jack's complaints against Leah, YouTube would take a week to react and would only end up demonetizing Sniper Wolf's content temporarily. However, this would only cause more controversy, as many creators believe that YouTube was just trying to protect a bigger creator who is bringing in lots of views every day and thus a ton of revenue for the platform. She has no accountability, no remorse. YouTube haven't even taken that into consideration all they're doing is trying to protect their golden girl. It is absolutely mind-blowing that they think this is what should be the punishment. Leah would go on to apologize for her actions, but many felt like her apology was insincere and that she was forced to do so by YouTube so she could be allowed on the platform again. The whole situation revealed Leah's intentions as she was willing to put Jack's life in danger just to make sure her videos are getting views and her reputation isn't damaged. Later in the year, it was revealed that Leah's ex who she'd broken up with a year ago had filed a lawsuit against Sniper Wolf pertaining to the channel that Leah was running and the documents revealed were the final nail in the coffin for Leah's reputation. Evan, aka Sausage, who's also a creator on YouTube, stated in the court document that he had been a partner with Leah and had done most of the work running the channel, which included recording gameplay, writing scripts, production, and uploading videos on the channel, while all Leah was doing was basically just sitting in front of the camera and reading the script. Other than the lack of effort, Leah is also extremely insecure when it comes to her channel, as she would go to dangerous lengths in order to keep viewers for herself. One of her victims was Aziland, who Leah claimed was stealing content from her when it was actually the other way around. Yourself, unless you suck. Then pretend to be somebody else. And that's on Azzyland. <laughs>
However, Azzy was interviewed by the YouTuber Nerd City, where she detailed how Sniper Wolf had begun manipulating her fans to believe that Azzy was the one that was copying Leah. She created the narrative that you had cloned her yeah. when it was the other way around. Azzy would go on to share disturbing things in the whole interview, from Leah copying her thumbnails and video titles, to Leah literally stealing Azzy's accent, which caused so many people to turn against Azzy that she had to change the way she talked. Now, many people have finally opened their eyes to Leah's evil ways and have put out many videos criticizing her. However, this doesn't stop Leah from posting the same lazy content without crediting the creators, which shows that she hasn't learned anything and doesn't intend to change her ways. No matter how many things Leah has done to keep her viewership up, at least she's been smart about it. The same clearly can't be said about Nikocado Avocado, who's literally eating himself to death just for clicks. Nikocado Avocado, also known as Nicholas Perry, started his YouTube channel after moving to Colombia to live with his boyfriend. Friend. At the time, Nicholas would post videos about playing the violin and his vegan lifestyle. However, things would soon change after he posted his first ever mukbang video. The video got a lot of attention, amassing over 50,000 views in just a few weeks. And this was the point where Nicholas's channel and personality would change forever. Over the next couple of years, Nikocado's content would shift solely to being mukbangs and he would gain over 5 million subscribers on his two channels. Before his first mukbang, Nikocado weighed just under 150 pounds, but after a while, his weight would skyrocket over over 200 pounds, coupled with a decline in his mental health. Even though it was quite obvious for the viewers that the mukbangs were obviously the reason behind the weight gain, Nikocado was still in denial and would often make excuses about why he was gaining so much. So let's do this as a 300 pound man. Ooh, but it's just water weight. It's just water. Okay. <laughs> Nicholas would post many videos about how the weight gain was ruining his life, but at the same time, the views his videos were bringing in were just too lucrative to let go, so he would continue to upload mukbangs, often even posting 10,000 calorie challenges and having no regard for his overall health. Even though the views kept coming in, Nicholas would still go beyond to make sure it stayed that way. His relationship with his husband Orlin was slowly becoming more toxic, with a couple kissing on camera one minute, only to fight and shout insults at each other the next. Not. Go vegan! Go vegan! What the f Sadly, Nikocado's relationship would reach its tipping point as a couple would split and file for a divorce. Nicholas was devastated by the news and would post a video detailing how his channel was a reason behind his failed relationship. But in his next video, he would post him bragging about the new house he'd purchased, seemingly unaffected by the situation prior. The video itself was extremely difficult to get through as Nicholas went from being overjoyed about his new life to breaking down in tears because of the loneliness. It is a little lonely here. <laughs> It seems as if this hunt for views had got him all the money he had ever wanted, but at the expensive cost of his health and relationship. But later, Orlin would return to Nicholas's channel with the title of the video being Why We Can't Break Up. The videos still show the pair fighting, which shows how food isn't the only toxic thing Nicholas has had a hard time of letting go of. His relationship updates on YouTube brought up questions about him faking this drama to get more views, which isn't too surprising because this wouldn't be the first time he's done that either. Nikocado has always used clickbait to get attention, posting videos like My Last Video and I Quit Mukbang. However, everything changed when in 2023, Nikocado posted a video titled How Much I Weigh Now, where he details his weight loss journey. Fans in the comments were overjoyed by this news, as they flooded his comment sections with messages of support like, I'm actually proud of you Nick, I can tell you lost weight and your mood seems to be a lot better. Glad you're doing well. Except, the positivity was just short lived, because Nikocado would soon revert back to his old ways, with his most recent video video titled I Quit My Weight Loss Journey, Time To Get Fat Again. In the video, Nicholas once again blames everyone other than himself for his issues. Some of the comments read, this man does not deserve all the love and support he's getting. And this is disturbing and incredibly sad. It feels like we are witnessing a man's slow and deliberate descent into madness and a slow death. As of now, it doesn't seem like Nick Okado has any intention of changing his lifestyle and he seems to be okay with the consequences it presents. Because in his latest video, Nicholas breaks down once more and contemplates whether he's doing all of this just so people can feel sorry for him.